So in this video I want to show people what you can do offline with a Chromebook. So if you've been looking at Chromebooks and thinking about buying one, by now you know that they're pretty much devices that are uh, fairly well tethered to the internet. They don't really do a whole lot unless you have a steady Wi-Fi connection, but of course we can't always have a steady Wi-Fi connection. So I want to do a video example of some stuff that you can do offline with a Chromebook so people can um, see what they'll be getting into for those times that they don't have online access. So here's my desktop, and I just want to show you, uh, just so you can see, I've taken us offline. I don't have um, the um, internet connected so that, you know, deliberately so that we can find out what it's like offline. So see, I just try to go to my email and it's telling us that uh, we're not online. So that lets us know that online is completely cut off. So without further ado, let me show you some of the things you can do offline. First thing you can do is I, I'm going into my Google Documents and my Google Drive. Uh, so I just press the icon and even though we're offline, you see it actually opens up in a web browser. So it's uh, kind of counterintuitive, but uh, everything will still open up in a web browser that can be done offline. And you'll notice that there's actually quite a few documents here that are showing up. Um, so here's how th this works. Uh, Google Drive offline has to be set up in advance. So you have to have an online connection. And if you go to, uh, on the left here, on the left side, there's a, a menu item that says offline. When you go to Google Drive for the first time and you want to sync offline for the first time, you go here, it's going to prompt you to pick up the offline Google Drive app in the web store. And from there, it's basically a matter of syncing documents. Now, you can't do a selective sync. You can't pick and choose the documents you want to be available offline. And since we only have 16 gigs of hard drive storage, obviously, uh, there's a, a limit to the number of documents that can be taken offline. So you probably can't take all of them if you have more than 16 gigs. So what Google does is they sync the last 100 documents that you've created, worked with, or opened offline. And then uh, if you, let's say, create another document, so you now have 101 documents, it takes the hundredth of that 100 documents that you already had and actually takes it offline. So it only stores 100 documents at a time. <clears throat> but here's the good thing. Um, you can uh, pull up documents and you can edit them in the same way that you would do if you were um, using Google Docs online. So if I want to, um, you know, change some things around, I can do that. So, and what it does is it saves everything offline. It saves your changes offline until it gets online again, and then it actually syncs up in the cloud. So even when you're offline, you don't need to actually save anything. You can't save anything um, manually. It just saves every few seconds like it does online. So you can do that with uh, documents. You can do that with um, slides. Let's see if I have a good presentation here. Uh, the Google Slides presentations you can edit. The only thing you can't edit and you can only view at the moment are spreadsheets. So um, that's that's definitely might be a concern if you're uh, editing spreadsheets, but unless you're doing that, it's a pretty handy thing to have offline. So the next thing you can do offline is if we go into settings, I can uh, go into Gmail offline. Again, this is an app you need from the App Store and you're going to have to sync it in advance. Um, make sure that your, your device is set up to sync in advance. And you'll notice that uh, just like Google Drive, it stores an impressive amount offline. I, I'm not sure it's all the emails that you have, but it stores a, a pretty impressive amount offline. So you'll notice that, let's see, let me pick a good one. Um, I can open an email offline. I can actually reply and type the text of the email in. And what it will do if I type anything is it will, um, once I press send, obviously it can't send it unless it's online, but it will save it uh, until it's online and then it will send it. Another great thing I can do here is I can create an email and you'll notice that if I type in an email address, it actually uh, pulls up the contact email list. So it's almost like you're online. It actually not only stores your emails, but your contacts. And again, it waits to, to send the email, obviously, until you're back online. So those are some of the things you can do. Uh, there's a few others, though, that are actually really helpful. So one of the uh, apps that I find really helpful for offline 
access is an app called Pocket. You might know of it from Android or the iPad store. And what Pocket is, is um, it is a tool for your web browser. So whenever you see a web page that you want to read later, whether it's like an article or a review or something like that, you can actually um, use Pocket to save an offline version of it. Uh, and again, we're offline, so I can go in here, and here's a, an essay that um, that I want to read while we're offline, and you can do things like um, change the font size, you can make it bigger, uh, or you can make it smaller, depending on what you want to do. But it's actually really helpful, because you can, um, you know, save a whole bunch of stuff, and if you know you're going to be offline at some point on an airplane or whatnot, you can actually save this stuff to read. So that's pretty helpful. Some other apps, let's say you want to uh, read some books. So there's two ways you can do that without online access. The Kindle ebook store, um, Amazon's ebook store, or you can do that with Google Play Books. And what you're gonna have to do again, you have to set everything up uh, in advance. Both of these give you the option with any book that you've purchased in their cloud service to do what you call pin the book to your um, uh, storage. So let me go into Amazon's Cloud Reader, and I've actually pinned a particular book onto um, the desktop. So this book I can actually open up and, and uh, read online, just like I were reading on, let's say, an e-reader or something like that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure um, if I wanted to, I could highlight the book, although I, I'm not sure that's a functionality. So I can bookmark the book. I uh, don't know about highlighting. It doesn't... Ah, okay, I can highlight. So I'm assuming, again, what it does is it holds the highlight until you're back online, and then obviously it syncs up to your your uh, cloud. And again, I can do that with uh, Google Books. I, I think I have two books pinned. So with this one, it actually shows the outlines of the books that you don't have online. And uh, the two books I actually have for offline access are these two. So let me open up one of these. And again, remember, we're completely offline right now, so everything is stored locally. And the great thing about pinning books to your uh, desktop is once you unpin them, it automatically deletes them from your hard drive, so there's nothing you have to clean off of your hard drive. It will automatically um, take the book off once you unpin. One more thing you can do um, is you can play certain games. So. Uh, I have, I think here, Tetris and Office Solitaire. Let me just open up uh, Tetris, although um, I won't start it, but you can see it's actually ready to go here. Again, it's completely offline. There's um, uh, quite a number of games. If you go into the App Store and you look under their offline apps, you'll see a, a lot of games in there. And one more thing before I uh, forget, there's several note-taking um, apps that, that will work offline. Uh, there's Google Keep which I believe comes pre-installed. Um, yeah, so here's Google Keep. And what you can do is actually um, just create a brief note if you're um, thinking about a certain thing and you don't want to lose it or you're trying to write down a phone number. I use it a lot for writing down phone numbers. Uh, in fact, you can, can do that. And then again, it saves it and then syncs it to the cloud once it's uh, done. You can also, uh, another one I like is WordFlow. And it just opens up just a blank um, document here, and you can just write whatever you want. And once again, it saves it to the um, the web once you're done. So that's, a, in a nutshell, what you can do online with uh, Google Chromebooks. And I'm sure there's a few things that I've left out. Again, if you go to their app store and you look under offline, you'll find a ton of apps, everything from uh, clocks to to-do list makers, to uh, everything like that. So there's a fair amount you can do offline. It's not going to satisfy, you know, high productivity users, but then again, uh, even with a full working laptop, there's just a limited amount you can do offline anyway. So I really think that if you are looking at the Chromebook, you shouldn't let the offline uh, uh, questions really, really uh, decide for you because there's just a lot you can do.